Okay, we're on Luke chapter 5. Let's start with verse 1. It's our New Testament reading for today. Luke 5, uh, verse 1. What page is that on in the, in the Pew Bibles? 1094. What, what page? 1094. 1094. And it came to pass that as the people pressed upon him, to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake Gennesaret and saw two ships standing by the lake, but the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. And entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land. And he sat down and talked to people out of the ship. And now when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, that's Peter, launch out into the deep and let down your net for a drought. It's going to catch a bunch of fish. And Simon answered and said unto him, Master, we have toiled all night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. See, uh, he was a professional fisherman, so professional fishermen, uh, they know how to catch fish. People, I say, who like, uh, like I can ask you here. How, uh, um, how many fishermen do we have in here? No, okay. Now let, let me just tell you. I don't know what category you're in now. Now a fisherman doesn't mean you go fishing. A fisherman means you catch fish. You understand? <laughs> a lot of people go fishing and they, they they're, you know, that's okay. They like to sit around, whatever the case may be. But especially these professionals, they know where the fish are, and uh, and what's going on. They fished all night, couldn't get nothing. You know that's our problem. We we try to work out our own problems and solve our own uh, sins, and we try to do all that thing like Paul come in today. And, and uh, uh, you're right in the right place. You see your need, Paul. That's a good thing. Usually people come in and. And we'll get to that in, in chapter 5 here today. But, but usually there's a lot of self-righteous, haughty uh, people. There, there's some people, some people won't even come into our church. I tell them what, at the mission church. And he says, oh, you mean that? You mean that church where the drunkards and drug addicts and, and prostitutes go in there and all that? And that's the church? You're, yeah, that's our church. Oh, no, I ain't going to go there. They think they're better. They ain't better than nobody in here. Ain't nobody, they ain't one person in here better than anybody else in here. We're all sinners. You understand that? If you think you're better than anybody else in here, you're wrong. Like the old boy come in. We were over here at 425. We had our place. He come in, and he looked around, and he whispered in my ear. He says, Pastor Berga, he says, I just want to let you know I'm not like these other people in here. Well, I guess he thought he was better, huh? He wasn't any better. He's a, he was a Pharisee. He was self-righteous. We're going to talk about that a little further down here as we're going down in chapter 5. So everybody's welcome here. Uh, but you got to humble yourself and repent to be saved. Let's go on. Now, nice. And we're over here in Simon Answer Center. Here. Master, we have toiled all night. Verse 6, and when they had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes and their net break. Man, they couldn't get any fish. They were fishermen. They come in. They were washing their nets. That means they ain't going to try no more. Ain't no fish out there. And they beckoned unto their partners, which were in the other ship. And they said, come and help them. And they came and filled both the ships so that they began to sink. I mean, they got them some fish, didn't they? <laughs> I mean, when you got a fishing boat that's full and sinking, and you had to call some others to get them and, and help you get it. When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man. Oh, that's what you have to do. See, that's what you're lacking. You love your sin and you live in it. You love your sin and you live at it. You, uh, you live in it and you have to depart from it and say, Lord, be merciful to me, a sinner. You, oh, oh, you want to go to heaven. Oh, yeah, you talk about Jesus all you want, but until you repent and turn from your sins, you're going to split hell wide open. Now, I'm just trying to help you. I, I ain't trying to hurt nobody in here. I'm just trying to save you out of hell. You think you're good enough to go to heaven because you're better than someone else. You're wrong because you ain't better than nobody else. Uh, you know what? Uh, uh, 
you know how uh, you know how good you have to be to get to heaven? Does everybody know? Huh? Everybody know how good you have to be to get to heaven? Absolutely 100% perfect. And I am. Not because I'm not a sinner, but because Jesus is my way. Jesus saith, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me until you're ready to turn from your sins and repent and humble yourself and say, Oh, Lord, forgive me. I'm nothing but a wicked sinner. The Bible says all have sinned and come short. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. The Bible says there's none righteous, no, not one. The Bible says the heart of man is desperately wicked. Who can know it? That's talking about my heart. That's talking about your heart. You need to be born again. And until you reach that place in your life, there ain't no hope for you. No hope. We go on. Uh, verse 10. And so was also... Well, I've been ahead of it. Oh, verse 8. And Simon Peter saw it and fell down at Jesus' knees, praying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he was astonished, and all that were with him at the drought, or the big catch, of fishes which they had taken. Verse 10. And so was also James and John, the sons of Zebedee brothers, which were partners with Simon. They, they were all fishermen. They were all in this thing together. <clears throat> And Jesus saith unto Simon, Fear not, from henceforth thou shalt catch men. There you go. So they had a new vocation. They no longer were fishermen that caught fish, but now they were fishermen that were going to catch men. Remember that song we used to sing in Sunday school? I will make you fishers of men, fishers of men. Fishers of men, I will make you fishers of men if they follow me. If you follow me, if you follow me, I will make you fishers of men if you follow me. <laughs> I, mean, I was saved a number of years, but in 1978, I was saved 1969, but 10 years later, God called me into full-time uh, ministry uh, at uh, Juno, uh, Juno Village uh, there in, uh, in Milwaukee. I was in the big boy restaurant, and I made a decision. That's a long story. I'm not going to tell it right now, but I, I, I made a decision to go into God's work. I, had a, I worked at a telephone company. I had a good position, made good money, and God told me you got to go into God's business full-time, which I did. And uh, I took over as the director of the Milwaukee Rescue Mission in, in uh, July of 1978. And I was there for a number of years. In 92, I came here to establish a new rescue mission. But I was reading the Bible uh, in Mark, and it said uh, it was a parallel passage. You, you know what parallel passage means? It means it's in, it's in one of the uh, what we call the synoptic gospels. It means that there's like the synoptic gospels are Matthew, Mark, and Luke. John isn't synoptic. Some of the stuff in the other three, but there are ones that in all three of them it says some stuff, some just two, and, and, and some one. But in this, but in in Mark in February I read we read that in Mark, and it was February when I got that call, and I and and I I gave my life to the Lord. And and I, I wrote in my I wrote in my Bible, next to where he says, "Follow me, I'll make you fishers of men." I, I wrote in my Bible at that moment when God it was a stirring moment in my life, and I wrote telephone company down there, because their living was fishermen, mine uh, was telephone man, and so uh, God told me you're gonna quit telephone company and and you're gonna serve me and you're gonna win souls fishers of men like to call the, his disciples and the moment i did that just i said that's it joe lennon walked in front of my table i was alone at my table on break i had a crew at that time telephone crew and i says joe you with anybody uh, he says no i said sit down and he sat down and 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 he was a superintendent uh he ran the rescue mission in milwaukee and i said joe the guy just called me, and I accepted the call. 
I'm quitting the telephone company. I'm going into full-time Christian work. And he looked at me, and, and, and he says, well, you know what? He says, I'm retiring from the rescue mission. You come down there all the time. You preach there all the time. I said, I'm going uh, I'm going to retire, and I believe you should take the rescue mission over. As quick as I surrendered, I didn't put out no resumes. I didn't do nothing. The moment I surrendered, God gave me a job. Isn't that something? And I was there for many years, and, 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 uh, and now I'm here. But follow me. Make you fishers of men. Glory to God. So uh, uh, let us go on. So here was the three. And when they had brought their ships to land, look, here it is. Here's what God wants of you. Listen now. Christianity isn't some little Mickey Mouse thing. You come to church once in a while and say, yeah, pastor, I've been baptized. That ain't, that ain't, that ain't what I'm asking you. Uh, I joined the church. and that what I'm asking you. Listen to this. Listen to this. This is what it takes to become a Christian. Are you willing to pay the price? They forsook all and followed him. Are you ready for that? That's what it takes to be. Oh, I ain't into that. Then you ain't going to be saved. You think, you think Christianity is some little Mickey Mouse thing that you come forward one day and say you accepted Christ and you got baptized like our baptistry up here and, and, and then you just go on living in the world and you don't care much about God like someone I talked to this morning, early this morning, and said things are going bad. I says, are, are, are you reading your Bible? Are you studying your Bible? I'm, I'm going to tell you something. And I believe this is true. I believe this is true. If you don't care nothing about the Bible and don't read the Bible much, I would say you're probably not saved. You, you tell me all you want. I'm saved. You might be, but I doubt it if you never read the Bible. You don't care what the Bible says. Either you're not saved or you're way backslidden. In order to be saved, there had to be a time in your life when you were born again, when you when you put, when you forsook all. I said forsook all and followed Jesus and started reading the Bible and quit your old junk that you were doing. See, some of you, you, um, uh, you say you've been saved. You ain't never turned away from anything. The Bible says if anyone's in Christ, they're a new creature. All things are passed away. I don't know what you can say. But I know this, I'm not a perfect person because the only one uh, was perfect was Jesus and he's my Savior. But I'll tell you this, come April 4th, 50 years I'll be saved. I used to smoke three and a half pack cigarettes a day. 50 years I never smoked a cigarette. I used to sit down and drink a whole case of beer by myself. 50 years, never had a bottle of beer, any other kind of alcohol. Someone told me this, I don't know which one of you it was, he said, well, yeah, and this, that, and the other thing, and I just, I drink a little bit and all this and that. Oh, shut up. Quit drinking. Quit smoking. Quit shacking up. Quit living like that. Some of you folks come in here because you've been shacking up for six months or a year or two. You act like you're married. You ain't married. You're, you're, uh, you're committing adultery or fornication. People, I'm talking about you that are sitting here right now. You say, but pastor, you got to get up to date. Everybody lives like that. Everybody lives like cats and dogs. Cats and dogs don't get married because they're not human. You say, but we come from cats and dogs. <laughs> no, I didn't. <laughs> I come from Adam and Eve who were created in the image of God. By the way, uh, they're your ancestors too. So someone asked me, I forget who it was. I think it was Big John on the radio. I get on there once a month, the live programming. And he says, uh, Pastor Varga, he said, hey, we're on air. He says, have you had your DNA checked? I says, for what? To see where you come from. I said, I know where I come from. <laughs> I come from Adam and Eve. Just like you and everybody else on the face of the earth, you say, no, I mean, what are you? What Are, are you a combination of a bunch, a bunch of races? They ain't but one race, the human race. We got a little different color skin or might have been born in a, a different part of the world or whatever, but we're, we're all, listen, we're all exactly the same, sinners. 
you know, we're all of one blood. You just you take blood. If you got B type, you get. Don't matter where when anybody's from, they got B type blood. You you give me blood, I can give you. I got B blood. How many of you in here got uh, B blood? You know, B blood. Just one person. I I didn't think is that rare. Uh, we could we could give each other blood. Now, uh, now how about O blood? How many got O? Uh, o, I guess you can give it to anybody. I mean, you can give it to B or A or what is it? A, B, and O. I think. I think that's a three. Is that it? Huh? There's A, B, and O, and there's A, G. Yeah, okay. But anyway, of all nations, one blood. One race, the human race. That's it. I get so sick of people talking about their race and that. You ain't but one race, the human race. Forget about all your big feelings about your, uh, your people. We're all the same people. We're all of the same race. We're all of the same blood. The only measurement God has upon you and I as his, as his creation, created in his image, is either if you're saved or lost. That's it. Saved or lost, heaven or hell. You got nothing to do with anything else. I don't care if you're a Democrat. I don't care if you're a Republican. I don't care if you're an Independent. I don't care what country you live in. We're of one blood. We're the creation of God. And the only way you become a child, of, not everybody's a child of God. Liberal churches, liberal Christians tell you everybody's a child of God. No, they're not. Everybody's a creation of God. But to become a child of God, you've got to come through Jesus Christ. I've seen some foolishness they had over here uh, the other day at the Catholic Church over there uh, down on, uh, what's that Catholic Church on Halifax? There's a Catholic church over there. Um, Father Phil's the pastor over there. Lady of Lords. A couple days ago, they had a big thing uh, uh, because uh, uh, a white supremacist uh, killed 46 Muslims, I guess, in, in uh, where was that? What name you listen to? Huh? New Zealand. New Zealand. And they, they had a, they had a service over there at the Catholic Church, and for unity. These were Muslims that did it, and uh, very seldom, do. Of course, a, a man that would be a white supremacist, he certainly would be all wrong, and it's a terrible thing. They just should be that way. Because I said, uh, all nations, one blood, one race, you know. But they're making such a big deal about this. And, by the way, I think it was a terrible thing, and it was a wrong thing to do, and no one should be murdered like that. But in this day and age, here in America, we're so afraid to say something about Muslims, we just keep our mouth shut. You know, Muslims are killing Jews and Christians and all over the world. I mean, thousands. They kill thousands because Muslim religion... It's not really religion. It's a political thing. Muslim is political, and they practice Sharia law. We got one now that's in the government. She's in, and she just went in, and, and she could say anything she wants, and she made anti-Semitic uh, things and all that, and, and she could say whatever she wants. And she has allegiance to, uh, to Muhammad, and, and, and she has a religion of, of, of Muslims, and they hate Americas, and, and, and here's what the Quran teaches, and this is what Muslims teach, and what they cry out. They do it every day in Iran, they call it out, and all the rest of them. If you're a real Muslim, death to Israel, death to America, death to Christians. That's the order that they, that they hate us in. And they kill us by the thousands all over the world. But then we, we then we had this over there, and they said, oh, wasn't so nice. The mayor of of, Mil, uh, of Daytona said, oh, yeah, it's so nice. He's over there, made a speech, too. I, I think them, uh, uh, um, I think, I think rather than uh, glorifying uh, Muslims and saying we need to hold hands with them, I think the Catholic Church ought to worry more about queer priests. Yeah. Queer priests. The Roman Catholic Church is the largest pedophile organization in the world. 
And you ain't seen nothing but the tip of the iceberg. And yet they're going to they're going to say, oh, yeah, how am I going? <laughs> how am I going? I'm a Christian. How, how am I going? I'm going to pray for a Muslim. I'm going to hope they get converted and saved. But I'm not going to have fellowship with them. They said, let's just all get along. I can't get along with a Muslim, but they want to cut my throat. <laughs> I'm an American and I'm a Christian. They want to do me in. And they do a, a plenty of Americans in and they do Christians in every chance they get. And there'd be thousands of, I believe I could say, uh, there'd be uh, hundreds and yea, thousands of Christians that they'll kill all over the world. Today! Muslims won't take the world over. It's called jihad. It's called a caliphate. All that kind of stuff. And they said they're going to do it and this and that. So you watch out. I'm a Christian. And if, if you want to become a real Christian and take on Christ, they're going to be against you. The Muslims are going to be against you. The Buddhists are going to be against you. The communists are going to be against you. The false Christians, there are plenty of those. They're going to be against you. Don't believe in the born again experience, you see. And, 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 and that's what you get. I'm asked, okay, you call me all you want, and like they do on Facebook. Oh, and Mark is a bigot, and, and, and uh, he just thinks Christians. I know Christians are the ones going to heaven. You see, if I won't take Muhammad, you know what I am? Listen now. I'm an infidel. If you're a Buddhist, you're an infidel. Anything in the world that isn't Muslim, and a true Muslim follows the Quran, and, 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 a, and, a, and a true Muslim believes in jihad. Ain't enough talking about, ain't enough preachers talking about this. I thought, I've been hearing too much of this. We got government people now. They're in there and they're in their free reign to uh, come up against Israel and come up against Christians and on and on. And no one's going to say that. This preacher's going to say something. You look, they say, they, and then these liars come on. They come on. They say, "Oh, they misrepresent Muhammad. He was a peaceful man. Uh, Muhammad was a dirty murderer and a pedophile. That was Muhammad. That's him. So don't don't tell me who I know who Muhammad is. I read about it. Okay." I read about him, and I could tell you all about him. And and he's not a good man, and and he didn't he didn't know how to read or write. He didn't write the Quran, and they change the Quran all the time. But I'll tell you what, uh, that Quran, it's for jihad. Jihad is to kill the infidel. Who's an infidel? Anybody that's not a Muslim. That's it. That's it. I mean, you can check it out. You you get a hold of these these real. Uh, Imams, we got one here in this town. Now he come from Dearborn. Uh, Dearborn's one of the worst places. Uh, they they've taken over Dearborn. <clears throat> I used to live in in Detroit, right this. Uh, I was on Warren Avenue. Well, I was on this side of Warren Avenue. It was uh, uh, Detroit, uh, and the other side of Warren Avenue was uh, Dearborn. And it used to be a real nice place. It's uh, it's all Muslims now. The Muslims take it over Dearborn. And they're sending them all over the country. They got a, a Muslim mayor. They got Muslim committee. That's what they do. They'll come in and Hamtramck. Over there, I come from Detroit, Hamtramck's got it. And this place where this, this Muslim woman that's now uh, uh, in the government, a, a House of Representatives, she's from Minnesota. Tons of Muslims in Minnesota, too. They're coming this place, that, and the other. And they'll take over like they have uh, in, in London. Why, in London, there's, there's many places... You can't even go. You can't go because it, it says it's a no-go zone. It means if you go there, there there's places in Europe, in France, uh, and, and they'll, they'll try to do it here too. There's places in Europe right now that the Muslims have taken over and they've established Sharia law, and they run it. They've got it. They've got it uh, in England. They've got a country in a country. If you let them establish Sharia law here, they got a country in a country. And uh, that, that's what they're doing. But be careful. Now let's get going. Where are we now? We're in the fifth chapter. Here we go. Uh, we, we get mid -ten. Yeah. And so uh, was also James and John, the sons of Zebedee. And Jesus said unto Simon, Fear not, from henceforth thou shalt catch men. You be a soul winner. And when they had brought their ships to the land, they forced. Here's where we're on 11. They forsook all and followed him. You ready to forsake everything? What's a big deal in your life? 
My family is the most important thing to me. Jesus got to be more important than your family. Does the Bible say that? Jesus said it. His mother and his brothers and sisters were outside the church. He was in here preaching like I'm preaching. And he said, hey, Lord Jesus, your mother's outside and your brothers and sisters. And did Jesus run outside to his mama and to his brothers and sisters? Here's all he said. He's up there preaching. He says, uh, who is my brother? Who is my mother? Who is my father? Those that do the will of my heavenly father. And he didn't even go out to see his mom. And, and that's what they, they <laughs> you see the Catholics, they uh, hook it up, biggest pedophile organization in the world. And they got you thinking that Mary is God. They got you praying to Mary. Look out. We might have some Catholics in here that they're going to take you to hell. Now, you know priests can forgive your sin. The only one can forgive your sin. Ain't no preacher can forgive your sin. Only God can forgive your sin. And through the blood of Jesus Christ. And I'm, I'm treating that out today. You did, I haven't treated everybody yet. But everybody I treat to today, uh, tweet to today, uh, not tweet. I don't tweet. The president tweets. I don't. I text. I don't tweet. I don't even know what tweet is. I don't know about that. <laughs> but I know how to use a, a, a texting. And I text it out today where, where it... Uh, uh, tells us that. If you get my text today, you'll see it. And it came to pass, verse 12, uh, uh, he was in a certain city. Behold, a man full of leprosy, seeing Jesus, fell on his face and besought him, saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. You see, he had faith. I'm, I'm having a sign made right now at, at the banner place, and I, I got I got a, a, a 7 by 3 A-frame, and I got two signs made. I'm going to put it out in front. It's, it says this on it. It says, prayer now, prayer now for deliverance from sin and sickness. I'm going to put it right out there, and I'm going to be here. I'll be in here praying for folks. Or any, that's business. We're going to be here. Someone wants prayer for sin or sickness. Or I'll be out on the driveway with the loudspeaker. I'll have a little table out there. People come in here. And I'll be right out. Quick as I get that sign, I'll be doing it. The God, God's going to bless it. Prayer now for deliverance from sin and sickness. That's your and you know sin and sickness go hand in hand like that. I guarantee you. Yeah, that's what the Bible teaches. Look look here. Uh, and he put uh, forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will be thou clean. God has the power to do that. And he'll give you the power to do it, too, through the power of the Holy Ghost. You ain't going to get no power of the Holy Ghost. You've got all the sin in your life, got all that wickedness. You ain't getting no Holy Ghost. And he charged him to tell no man. Uh... Then he withdrew himself. Verse 16, Then he withdrew himself in the wilderness to pray. He did that often. And it came to pass a certain day that he was teaching that there were Pharisees and doctors of the law sitting by, and they were come out of every town of Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem, and the power of the Lord was present to heal them. And behold, men brought in a bed sick. Oh, they brought him in. I won't tell it. I'll just, I'll just tell it to you. They had such faith, they'd get them saved. They're so full in there. People wanted to get, get healed and get saved. Went up on the roof, busted the roof up, uh, put them down on a rope right in the middle, right there in front of you. Can you imagine something like that? If, if we were so full in here, you couldn't get in the door, and, 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 and the roof got busted up, and, and, he, and he brought down, and, and, uh, and, and God healed them and saved them. Amen? Woo, that's the God I know. <laughs> Verse 20, and when he saw their faith, he said unto them, Man, thy, sin, uh, thy sins be forgiven thee. Yeah. The scribes and Pharisees, they griped about it. Then 23, Whatsoever is easy to say, Thy sins be forgiven thee, or rise up and walk. Yeah. That they may know that the Son of Man hath power upon this earth to forgive sins. He saith unto the sick of the palsy, I say unto thee, Arise, take up thy couch or bed, and go into thine house and immediately he rose up before them and took up wherein he lay and departed to his own house yeah glorified God glory to God so what a wonderful thing what a wonderful thing and we close on verse 32 and I'm done I came not to call the righteous if you're self-righteous in here and you don't think you need Jesus he said I came not to call the righteous but sinners to repentance you got to repent you must repent. The Bible says repent or likewise perish. You say, well, I ain't all that bad. Yes, you are. You're way worse than you think. 
You're a hundred times worse than you think you are. And you better repent and call upon the name of the Lord. Have you ever repented? Here and out there on Facebook. Have you ever repented? I hope you have. You've got to to be saved. Lord, thank you now for the word of God. Thank you that this wonderful story of Jesus bringing that drought of all them fishes. Peter, James, and John coming to Christ. Then he got Matthew and the other disciples. He says, they forsook all. Have you forsaken everything for Jesus? Are you playing church? Would you forsake everything today and put everything on the line all for Jesus? All to Jesus I surrender, all to him I freely give. I will ever love and trust him in his presence daily live. I surrender all. Oh, would you surrender today? Is God speaking to you? Call upon him right now. Pray this prayer with me. Heavenly Father, I believe you sent your son, the Lord Jesus Christ, to shed his precious blood on Calvary's cross and rise from the grave the third day, the best I know how, with an honest heart. I turn from my sins, and I receive you as my Savior. And thank you for saving me right now. Lord, thank you that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Anyone that's done it here in this auditorium or out there uh, on the viewing audience has been saved if you call with an open heart. I did it April 4th, 1969, some 50 years ago now. Glory to God. Thankful for these that are saved here and those maybe that got saved today and, and help us to cling to thee, come back from our regular backslidings that we need to turn from. Help us now. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless you.